31st, by the way. And I know many of you guys celebrate Halloween. Our family personally doesn't. But and because of you guys, I'm going to go ahead and share a tutorial for how to create this card. And it is a little bit of a long one, so you may want to go ahead and grab a cuppa or something else to drink and sit back if you're interested in learning how to create this cute little card. And I hope that you enjoy it. And I will look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Uh, by the way, I want to go ahead and um, thank you uh, right now for just the great comments and feedback that I got in the last video where I shared with you the 30 Days of Thankfulness project that I'm going to go ahead and, and participate in this month. And if you didn't see that, I will go ahead and link that in the information bar down below. Go ahead and check that out. It starts tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. Looking forward to it. And uh, so anyway, I will see you again real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need to uh, get started is a piece of yellow cardstock measuring standard A2 size card, which is 8.5 inches by 5.5 inches, scoring it at 4 and a quarter, and folding it in half just like you typically would. And um, now this is the part where if you have old school tools, that would be helpful. I'm using a colossal, but you could certainly use a plate or something. We're just going to look for something that's going to round the top here. And I, like I said, I'm using a colossal, and these are a little hard to find now. They kind of went obsolete when the die cutting machines became popular. And you can find them on eBay. You don't really need it because truthfully you won't use it very often at all. <laughs> especially if you have a die cutting machine. I'm going to be using the oval size and the largest of the ovals and I'm going to be using it with the notch at the top of the, you're not going to probably be able to see this, this is the part where you would snip and I'm going to be using that at the top of the card and I'm just going to be eyeballing it kind of visually trying to place the notch or the snip part in the center top of my card and I'm doing this upside down to you guys if it looks like I'm at the, at the bottom of the card I'm not all right so it doesn't have to be perfect again what I'm trying to do is just get the top of my card rounded like the top of the little minion guy here and I'm going to try and push hard to go through both layers again if you don't have one of these it's not a big deal you could certainly use a uh, like a saucer or some sort of a plate which may make it easier because what I'm going to have to do is now um, remove the colossal and then uh, snip this little spot here. So I'm not going to remove the colossal until I know I've made it through both pieces. Okay, that side looks good and this side looks good. Okay, removing that and getting my scissors here. Okay, so you see here I have to just snip this little spot. But that way, I know that it is semi-oval or rounded. Again, if you have it, it just makes it easier. If not, you could certainly use something else to make this little rounded shape. Alrighty, so this is our little Twinkie or Minion Top. Next thing we're going to do is I have a piece of black cardstock measuring 4 and a quarter inches long by 5 eighths inches uh, thick or wide it's not an exact science if you if you don't like tricky measurements 5 8 inches on your uh, paper trimmer if you're newer to measuring you could just do half inch it's not it's not like I said an exact science uh, we're just creating a band right here this piece so I just chose 5 8 inch because it needs to be wide enough uh, for this um, this punch that I'm using here which is the modern label punch and if I didn't already say so this is a Pinterest inspired card and I will um, I don't know if I pinned it but I will do my best to uh, link the resource right down in the info bar down below so there was no tutorial or anything this is just all visual so it is using quite a lot of punches but um, a cute little fun card so okay there's the band I'm not going to adhere anything down just yet because uh, I'm going to lay it all out because this mouth here is hand drawn so I want to make sure everything's in place and then leave of course enough room for the mouth so uh, let's go ahead and start building on uh, build the eye and then work on his little bibs here so the next thing is 
this punch here. It doesn't have to be this shape. It could just really be anything, but I happen to have this one. So um, this is the modern, modern label punch, but you could just use a rectangle and then just kind of notch it out. Uh, but this is using glitter paper from Hobby Lobby. This one does lose glitter. Uh, I heard that there is a glitter paper from Joann's that does not lose glitter. That may be a better option. But if that doesn't bother you, and it, it really doesn't bother me, uh, then that's what I'm using. And I'm snipping this in half because right here, using the... Um, eventually, we're going to get to using this for the eye, which is one and three quarter inches. And really, you wouldn't see much of this band. So we're going to cut this in half and then kind of separate it to make a wider band. And if that doesn't make sense to you, eventually it will here as we're building the eye. So we're going to separate that. And that's going to go somewhere along those lines there. Okay, so as I said, we're using the 1 and 3 quarter inch circle punch. And if you don't have this and you have a Cricut or the Silhouette, then that would work perfect. Just go ahead and um, cut your circles. And they don't have to be exactly these sizes. <laughs> I'm making my punch dull because this is the third card of these I've made. And cutting through this glitter paper is making it dull, so I need to sharpen my punches. So one and three quarter inch circle punch cut from white textured cardstock is what I've just done. And that's going to go somewhere around, around right there. And then uh, we're going to do the blue part of the eye using blue cardstock. Okay, this is a three quarter inch circle punch. Cut from texture blue cardstock here. I love this because you can use all your scraps. And we're not going to put that over here as much as it looks like it is because uh, this ring is taking up some of the room. So it's going to go around just offset from the center and then punching a half inch circle from black cardstock another circle and then using a white gel pen I'm going to go ahead and make the whites of the eye or the little glimmer there I've got my white gel pen here is this it? yeah that's the white one that way by doing it now it gives it a few seconds to dry before we actually need it all right now what we're going to do is make the ring here and the way that you do that um, I have a 1 and 3 8 inch circle punch you cut the smaller circle first and again if you cut too much from glitter paper especially this thick one from Hobby Lobby you're going to need to sharpen your punches and then you just do that through aluminum foil um, you cut the smaller one first, okay, and then you can just use this for another project. And then I'm going in, that was one and three eighths inch circle punch, then I'm going in with a one and three quarter inch, and if you don't have those sizes and you want to use a different size, you can, it'll just be a different width of a ring, which is no big deal. Okay, and then I'm going in with the one and three quarter inch. And I'm just going to, I'm going to turn this toward me and maybe this will help you see better because it'll uh, make less of a glare. But I just want to um, eyeball this and make sure that my ring is the same width um, as much as possible before punching it around all the edges. Okay. And then when I set that down, you'll be able to see better what I mean. Okay. There you go. Does that help? Okay, so now you can see this has a lens, and the way that I did that is using acetate or transparency or like a window sheet. Let me show you what I'm using. Okay, I've showed this before. Um, I just got this from Staples, and I know um, in the UK they also have the Staples. But uh, these are just transparency films or acetate, like I said, or window sheets. And you won't want to try and cut that just with your uh, this is an EK success circle punch but um, it won't cut through just by itself acetate it'll just it'll jam see it doesn't punch through it'll actually probably ruin your punch if you force it 
But here's a little tip. If you just take plain copy paper, you wouldn't want to use cardstock because it would create too much of a thickness. But if you just take plain copy paper and kind of sandwich it on the bottom and on the top of your um, acetate, then it will let you go ahead and punch it. So let me go ahead and show you here. Okay, so it takes a little muscle. And again, my punch is dull because I keep punching through that um, glitter paper. And yours probably wouldn't be as dull as mine. So there you have it. So you're not going to probably be able to see it, but it's there. So that creates the lens. And the only adhesive, well, the best adhesive, um, wet adhesive, that I know for attaching the uh, acetate to anything is Glossy Accents. Um, <clears throat> you can use the score tape or the red line tape, works well, but I prefer, I mean, I've tried all different kinds of things, but the best um, adhesive I've found is this Glossy Accents, or like a liquid, I know different liquid glass, this is a close to my heart one. Um, I know Stampin' Up! also has one. I can't think of the name of it right now, though. Um, but this is just a smaller one that's easier for me that I like to use. Um, I can't think of what Stampin' Up! says. But uh, just put it on really, really lightly. Um, but that works to me the best. And then you'll just put that on the window sheet and then we'll get that or the window sheet or the acetate and then we'll give that a minute to dry and then we're going to go ahead and add some foam tape around there to add the little lift that uh, the lens will let me show you to add the lift to that to make it look like a lens okay so then we'll start working on the his little bibs there so, so cute. And then we'll get it, the top part assembled and, and uh, work on the hair. And that's just snips of black cardstock. You probably know that. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. And, um, okay, so for the bibs, you're going to need um, basically just a piece of three and a quarter inch by one and seven eighths inch piece of cardstock. And the one and seven eighths that is just a tiny smidge smaller than two inches so three and a quarter inches by just a little bit less than two inches and what I did was uh, corner rounded with a quarter one and uh, one fourth inch quarter rounder and I'm just using the we are memory keepers one and then you just corner round the, the two bottom ones for the bibs and then um, I did the faux stitching around all the edges. Okay, and then for the little pocket here, that's just the one and three eighths inch circle punch again. Cut that out. And then you really just snip off the top of it, not even a quarter inch. Okay. And then pop that up on, um, on the textured side. You just pop that up on foam tape do the faux stitching around it and that's it. So uh, let me go ahead and do the faux stitching around there and then I'll be back in just a minute. So I finished off all of those and then the next thing I'm going to do is just lay it on here a little bit close to the bottom. Just kind of lay it all out. Um, scoot this little guy over. Again we want to leave room for the mouth. I'm going to place it and then I'm going to add a, just a little bit of adhesive. Oops, this goes off to the end. We're going to end up cutting off some of the straps. But this way we leave, leave ourselves room to work with. Um, centering it. This is why you don't want to adhere anything down because you got to fuss with it a little bit before adhering it. Okay, but what we can do is go ahead and adhere the pocket down. So just adding a double thickness of the foam tape. And this foam tape I pick up at Big Lots. And I first learned about this from Mary. Thank you, Mary. And of course, many of you know her. She's a sweetie pie. She's card crazy 09. And I think I need to turn this toward me, you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to have a crooked pocket on our hand. Hands, me anyway. Or on his bibs, I should say. Okay. 
a, let me add just a little bit of adhesive on here. Again, it's going to seem like it's going off to the side a little bit too much. Um, okay, I'm going to get my pokey tool and add in some brads. I just, I think these are probably quarter inch. If not quarter inch, they're pretty close to it. Just white brads. I'm just going to add these in like little buttons for his bibs. I have one of those brad splitters, but it's not at my desk, so I'm not going to bother with it this time. Okay. All right. Push this down. And oops, got his little eyeballs all crooked. You know, I'm just going to take that off. Alright, you grab my ATG gun and this is going to be super bumpy. Okay, one more and then a little bit on the straps. Again, we're going to cut some of this off anyway, so um, won't matter. Angling this toward the bottom. Looks about right to me. Again, we just have to leave some room for the mouth. And cutting this off. Cute. Fun little card. Alright, I think it's probably safe now to go ahead and put the band on. Let's see if that's straight. Okay, now we're going to start building the eye. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to add liquid glue this and I'm just going to use some scotch quick dry probably the easiest I'm leaving roughly a half an inch on the sides it may end up being a little bit more than I need or vice versa maybe not enough but about right. As long as it's about even, I think it won't matter. Okay. Our white circle in the center. Maybe up toward the top a little bit. Again, we have to leave room for the mouth. Now our blue piece, um, I'm going to put it offset from the center a little bit, but not quite over to the left fully. Okay, and then our little black piece. So fun. Okay, now the um, foam tape. I have a ton of it cut just from other projects. So, it just stays there until I run out of it. I'm just going to wiggle it around here. I just want to be careful not to let it show through on the um, toward the front or on the edges. Maybe I'll speed it up.
that is so cute. Okay, now I'm just going to take the liner off. Okay. Okay. Then draw his little mouth. And then we just got to make the hair, and he is done. I'm terrible at drawing, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. We're just going to make a little happy face on the guy. Cute. Probably could have made it bolder, but that's okay. All right, now we're going to just take a piece of black cardstock, scrap black cardstock. Um, let me make an angle here. And I don't want his hair to be too long, so. Okay, now all we're going to do is make little hair pieces. So there's one, two, and if it starts getting weird just cut some off and start again. So let me see here. I'll just use some quick dry. I could use dry because it probably dry adhesive would probably be less messy. Then you're just going to start Glue him on. Do you feel like he has enough? Or until you get sick of it. <laughs> but it's so cute. Um, and then, believe it or not, I actually had an envelope for this little guy. Uh, came from. I don't even know. I shouldn't have said. I'm just going to give him a couple. So I hope that you've enjoyed this, and it just makes a fun little card. I didn't realize, my I've never seen the video, but my daughter said they came from like mutated bananas or something. I had no idea. But I think it's cute, fun, it made me smile anyway. They're happy little guys, they're not scary at all. <laughs> So, okay guys, that's it for me today.